Hello, beautiful people. Future me. Let's get into it. It's 36 past midnight right now. My CPU is... Eaten alive again? How could it be? I don't know. Let's go.
I don't know what to, but it felt nice. It felt nice to type right now. Okay, well, that's a horrible score, but I really enjoyed it. Interesting. Uh, we are doing a good program. Sure, let's go with JavaScript. Let's only have fifty two percent on it. I clicked it, right? Maybe I didn't. Arrow functions. I like arrow functions. Always support function definitions with arrow without names. Uh, with and without. So this is with, uh, so we'll return one. And this is without name, but it's assigned to a constant, so this will return one as well. Uh, this is self invoking function, so called iffy. Uh, so these are these three things. So first, has a name in here, like in front of the bananas, as I like to call them. The second one, we have a function without a name. There is a function keyword followed by bananas. And all of the function is assigned to constant f, and f is invoked. And this one is iffy. It is a function, like you see in here, but wrapped in extra bananas like stars here ends here and then invoked how do you invoke bananas we can use the function syntax to define callbacks but awkward function x return oh yeah yeah you can do that JavaScript supports another syntax definition called arrow functions because the operator looks like an arrow. This one takes argument x and returns is double. Uh, yeah, so this is two, four, six. 
the arrow function above took exactly one argument so we would write it in the shortest arrow function okay so take standard argument and click zero we have parentheses around it ah so if we have no input parameters we can do that all right so all of them will be five In this next example, the index argument will get the index of each array element, 0, then 1, then 2. OK, so you're returning the index of 0, 1, 2. Arrow functions support rest parameters and destructuring, just like normal functions do. Using those features requires parentheses around the argument list, even if there's only one argument. So here is destructuring, and we have that get name user. So that will return a mirror. First rest, and we will return rest. So this will return an array. Two, three, four. So far, we found zero function on one line. <laughs> so three, six. We can also write multi-line arrow functions by wrapping the function body in curly braces. This longer function does the same thing as the shortest version above. Yeah, there's an extra return statement. Look, looky look. That will tell us. One line arrow function simply return the value of that line. There's no return statement. Yeah, and we have we have to explicitly return a value. Many few so this is a few. There's a problem related to these multi-line arrow functions. When an arrow function needs to, to return an object, you may be tempted to write it like an example below, but it won't work. Uh, I see, I see. I have to do return and then things. Uh, we meant to return an object, but uh, opening curly brace in that example is big getting a multi-line function body, not an object. The solution is to wrap the object in parents. Oh, that's awkward, but it's the only way to clearly distinguish between multi-line function and object. So this works. OK, so I'm here. The terseness, what's that? A furrow function is nice, but they have a second big benefit. Their scoping rules are easier to think about than regular functions. <laughs> We've seen situations where we are tempted to use bind to force a certain value into this. Here's a before and after showing that. Address, address string. Yeah, this cannot work. And now we have <laughs> return uh, find this. Yeah, uh, this is the solution to that. So I should remember. With arrow function, there's an easier solution. An arrow function sees everything that its parent scope can see. In particular, it sees the same disk that its parent saw. There's the example above written in arrow function. No need for any confusing 
spine calls. Takes no argument. This is country. Sure, so this will return Paris, France. Add a volume function method to a 3D rectangle below, which should return the function that returns the 3D rectangle's volume. The function that you return should be an arrow function, which will ensure that uh, it can see the rectangles this. I have to return that stuff. Maybe I do. Oh well. Unexpected token. Well, for JavaScript scoping are complicated, especially the rules that concern this. Fortunately, and the rule for arrow functions is simple. Arrow functions can inherit the scope they were defined in. This makes them ideal for use with callback functions, where we often want to reference variables in the function or object that created the callback function. So they inherit the scope, they were defined in, okay. That's it? Oh, okay. New number methods. Number is an N is in the only new property of number. For example, number is finite checks. That value is neither infinity or minus infinity. Using case finite helps you to avoid possible mistakes. Checking for infinite values by doing x strictly equals to infinity. That would miss the minus infinity, which is a different value. Uh, so this is false. Number is finite, true. 
false, false, mm. it's finite, true, false, oh, it's number dot something, it's finite, returns false or not a number. That makes some sense. And n is in the number, so it's definitely not a finite number. returns false for NAN. It doesn't return NAN. I misread it. All numbers in JavaScript are floating point, which means that they become imprecise past certain threshold. This can be especially dangerous when dealing with numbers that we think of as integers. Modern versions of JavaScript give us number min safe integer and max safe integer to help here. They define the smallest and largest numbers that they can be safely treated, treated as integers. So this is a number, and that's the same number but minus number min safe, max safe. That is true, right? Any number larger than max safe integer or smaller will return unexpected results for some integer operations. For example, when number is greater than max safe integer, we came up with situation here. I would say it's true. It's not. There's also number dot is safe integer method that checks both the lower and upper bound for us. That's particular situation here. <laughs> so this is like maximum, then we go one down. So it should be like 990. So this is 990. Yeah, this is false. But I understand those are not the same. Minus 990. This will be 991. So this is false. And now we have a safe integer plus 2. So that would be ending in 992. And this will be 993, but those are the same. Okay, so this is the situation. Write a safe integer multiply function that multiplies two numbers. The product of the numbers isn't safe integer, it will throw an error. You can throw with throw new error. Okay. So, integer multiply. And we will have 
const result equals x times y if number is safe number uh, integer right Return result What just happened? Go away Unexpected end of input. That works. One final math related feature. In the past, we used pow matpo to compute exponents. Now JavaScript with exponential operator star star. This is the same syntax used in Ruby, Python, and other languages. Uh, that's it. Okay. Two minutes. We call JavaScript today, that's cool. It will finish in 12 days. We'll see. We'll see. What about TypeScript? When I will finish TypeScript, huh? Four days. Okay, sounds good. Let's do some typing. My computer is fried. Oh, I did complete it. Okay. Let's do closure. 
first lessons are quick, so maybe I can do this. It's not here, it's here, okay. Thirty-one minutes. What is my result? Three percent, thirty-five. Maybe I should be. What is it? Closure developer. <laughs> oh, it's not bad. Three percent. That's great. Okay, thirty-two. Two minutes over the limit. That means we are done. Done is better than perfect. And I will see you next time. Bye.